Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some more Naya Legends. It's been a long time since we played this deck. Too long, if you ask me. And so let's try it again. Basically, what we have here is we have a deck that's trying to take advantage of two of the best legendary sorceries. And hopefully cards that we'll be able to play... Um, to in more with more regularity and maybe to some more success whenever uh, War of the Spark releases and we have a lot more legendary creatures and planeswalkers in that set. So we have two copies each of Kamal's Druidic Vow and Urza's Ruinous Blast. And so both of them need a legendary creature or planeswalker on the battlefield before you can cast it. And therefore, we have a deck filled with legendary creatures and planeswalkers. So the only cards that aren't <laughs> legend, legendary creatures or planeswalkers are just our four Llanowar Elves to get us a little bit of ramp and the Lava Coil. And that's really about it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, basically let's, let's play a bunch of sweet creatures, sweet planeswalkers, and hopefully these two legendary sorceries either get rid of our opponent's board or give us a huge board there. All right, we have Nia Legends. This is a more aggressive legendary deck than some of the other Legends decks we play. We actually have some good two and three mana creatures curving Amara on turn two until oh I forgot to switch our, our sleeves and I forgot to switch from Dovin yeah we're not using cool sleeves forgot about sleeves but Amara into Tajik can get us a very good start no one said anything I'm blaming y'all All right, now if we draw an untapped red source here, we'd be able to cast Squee on turn two. I don't think I've seen Nahiri. So we did draw that untapped red source, but our land war elf was dead. So our opponent has Lazav. So we're assuming this is a Phoenix deck with Radical Idea, and that's probably not too good for us. All right, go Squee, go. Against the Phoenix deck, we'd really want to see like, um, Urza's Ruinous Blast that exiles all the drakes and phoenixes and everything like that. And our opponent let us get to combat before they bouncing the Aurelius. We got an extra two points of damage in. That's pretty good for us. So 
So do I want to play Aurelia again, or do I want to play Tristani? I think Aurelia again. The thing I'm a little worried about Tristani is it's... You know, our opponent could certainly just have Lava Coil that they're sitting over there with. And... I don't want to give them the opportunity to... Uh, or, like... You know, like, basically I don't want to give them a really good juicy target for the Lava Coil. Um, not really, if I, uh... Proto hasn't done a whole lot so far. Which is good for us. So, yep, they did have that Lava Coil. That's fine. Make them use another, an extra removal spell. And now we'll go with Tristani. Line Tamer asks, what are the standout cards from War that you've seen so far? And honestly, I haven't really been I haven't really been looking at the the set too deeply or anything. Um, honestly, like I couldn't tell you. Like Matthew said, Flux Chandler, and I couldn't tell you what Flux Chandler is. So we got spell pierce covered. We don't have dive down covered. I didn't live through hell to lose to you. So do I want to attack trade off one of these things for 5 damage? I think so. Yes, they could block squee and we only deal 4, but The Contempt Art is, from what I've heard, the Contempt Art is going to be given out at the end of April for everybody who's Platinum or higher on the Ranked system here. So I'm going to be playing some Ranked to try to get there, at the very least. Balance comes. This should kill our opponent. All right, there we go. Um, but yeah, I haven't just haven't been looking too closely at at all the the new cards and everything. I don't know, just been been a little busy this week. Besides like the time streaming, so basically been streaming and then been been getting other work done and stuff and. Um, been a little busy and just haven't gone through and looked at all the cards. My downtime, I've been uh, like after the stream, relaxing and just watching some baseball. This is the first first week of baseball, so give it some more time to get some more of the previews out and everything. And you know, we're we're a ways away from the set coming out. You know, we're three weeks away, so. Let's see. I am planning on, on making some YouTube-only content here pretty soon. And that's where, I'd, that's where I'm going to do, like, the ranked stuff. YouTube-only content, too. Because, you know, I'll have to get a... I'll have to get at least towards, like, the Veracity's Contempt. At the very least.
This is 61. Death Sprout, one BBG instant, destroy target creature, search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. Yeah, that card's really good. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty impressive card. I certainly am one that likes having access to more lands, that's for sure. I was hoping my opponent was going to play something with this one extra mana, because I really don't want them to kill the Captain Lannery Storm here. Please let me attack. Bang. And they learned from game one to put the stop correctly. I really wanted that treasure, because we we're just sitting with five drops in hand. Alright, so let's use Harpooner here. Not Lava Coil, because if they have Phoenix, we can coil a Phoenix. I guess the problem with using Harpooner, though, is if my opponent has... Um, if they have Niv-Mizzet, maybe you want to save Harpooner for Niv-Mizzet. That could, they could potentially kill a Niv-Mizzet later. So again, Tristani gets Lava Coiled pretty easily. Let's go with Lyra, that would make them use two spells or I suppose have Beacon Bolt. Double Lava Coil, that's kind of good for us. Means they probably don't have a third Lava Coil for Tristani. But you never know. You never know. I want them just to have a bunch of creatures that we can Urza's Ruinous Blast away. Druidic Vow... We want to be able to Druid Vow for at least five, because we have so many five drops in the deck. So we we need one more mana to be able to Druidic Vow for five. But again, if the Tristani dies, then my hand is just basically completely turned off, because I won't be able to Vow or Blast if, if the Tristani dies, which did not, which is good news. It's a tough turn. I mean, I could just fire off the Vow for four. All right, this is kind of risky, but I want to go Llanowar Elf first. Let's attack with those things. Should just attack with those. Of course, we could have coiled the Mystic, but we'll wait for Blast. Ugh. 
That was a card I did not want to see. So the problem with Mizzet, of course, is it's legendary, so Blast doesn't hit it. That was the reason to save Harpooner. Wouldn't have been able to Harpooner it anyway right now. And yeah, they can kill my little thing. I don't really care about that token. We're hoping to hit Vivian. Let's see if we hit a Vivian. Look at the top five cards. Find target Vivian. Put it into play. Vivian. Ugh. Our second vow. And another blast. That's not good. Especially that second vow. That's kind of rough. Three cards. We have seen them use a lot of removal so far. One shock, two lava coil. So, so they have dive down. So that's good to know. We know they have dive down. and they just drew a lava coil. Now they're just going to have enough card draw. niv it is pretty ridiculous. So I guess I could have... I mean, I could have just blasted last turn... Get rid of the Electromancer. Basically, I, I'm not really that scared of anything in their deck except for Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet is just brutal. I could play Carnage Tyrant, but then Carnage Tyrant doesn't really allow me to blast. because we have this Dovin as our avatar. Need to have something better than Dovin. So we're playing 26 lands, that's why So like one land one lander one lander is Pretty brutal with 26 lands. No, Vines is not good. <clears throat> I mean, Cliff Trap Retreat is double red, my second red source and my second white source. And I'm probably going to need another land. Yeah, I'll just keep it. 
the you know like this is a risk of course keeping the clifftop retreat because then like if we draw our four and five mana cards it's great it's really glad that we kept that but we could just have a bunch of lands underneath it and we could just flood out and then we'll be like why did we keep this clifftop retreat you know kind of thing it's kind of like the the darned if you keep it or darned if you put it to the bottom kind of thing I think the land war elf is pretty vulnerable here to like a deck full of shocks and coils and things like that yep next card was a land Yeah, it doesn't make any sense that Ripbound Craig, or Crag, sorry, Ripbound Crag does not have a cosmetic. Okay. Tajik is awesome. That's a great draw. That's a great draw. Oh, I should have played Stomping Ground. I was thinking I could have had the first strike on Tajik, but I cannot. So I should have just played Stomping Ground last turn. But that is perfect. Now we are we are fully insulated. We have the combo. No, cuz yeah, basically I have I have two just singular green mana sources, so I can't I can't get the Tajik with first strike. But that's what I was thinking too. I was going to use my elf so I could have first strike, but I can't. But now we're we have the combo. None of their burn spells do anything now. Because they can only target Shalai with, like, coils and shocks and even Niv-Mizza damage. All that kind of damage. The only thing they can target is Shalai. But then Tajik prevents the damage to Shalai. So we're, we are insulated. Yeah, fiery cannonade would deal would prevent all the damage to everything except for Tajik. But now we have Tajik at being a 4-3. So they'd have to have double fiery cannonade to kill Tajik right now. And then that's all all double fiery cannonade would do is just simply kill Tajik and then they could start targeting Shalai again after that. So I guess we're not technically fully insulated. They could have Into the Royal. We saw that game one. Uh, blink of an eye, whatever. That card. They could have blink of an eye. We saw that game one. That's basically their only removal spell that works. Alright, gonna just keep 
keep putting the pressure on. Because it doesn't get a whole lot better for us with them having Electromancer, Murmuring Mystic. Like, they can cast a whole lot of spells, get a whole lot of Nif Triggers and everything. So we can put them down to three here by activating Shalai. All right, so now activating Shalai would only would only deal one damage. So I think I just play other Amara. No, I think I activate. I think that makes um, like this Llanowar Elf, you know, the the Llanowar Elf can now. Get through Niv Mizzet and Murmuring Mystic as well next turn. So now we don't have to worry about Machine Gun Niv at least. So they're just attacking for Charter Course, I guess. But we'll gain the two. Niv still, of course, draws extra cards, but doesn't machine gun anything. And they can't target anything else. They can't target us, because it's a lie. Like, they have to either target, you know, their creatures themselves or Shalai. So, Shalai gets targeted. Tajik protects Shalai. That is a sweet combo. It's not one that we actually have out very often, with having just two Shalais and two Tajiks. It just doesn't happen very often. So the problem with casting Lava Coils, I, well, I guess we don't necessarily need to activate Shalai. So we cast Lava Coil, they dive down. So, I mean, they have to have Dive Down or they're dead, right? No. Yes. But they do have Dive Down or they're dead. Or should I be activating Shalai? Yeah, let's just attack. I like, I kind of like just attacking. Like I could, so I could put like the 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 other counter over here and make this thing a three three, and then like this makes it a four four also. So like every you know, so they have to sp spread out the blockers and everything. I'm just thinking that, that our opponent's probably going to have a dive down, and it certainly looks like it here for how my opponent's blocking. They're going to dive down Niv.
Oh, but now Tajik's dead. Man, I should just cast the Lava Coil first. I should just cast the Coil first and just pass the turn. Now Shalai's gonna die. Lava Coil is a sorcery. I couldn't, like, respond with it or anything, but... Okay, attacking first was, was really bad. I should have just passed. Or just coiled. That was... Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't let the Tajik die like that. That was a big waste. Like, I certainly knew they had dive down. So, what I wanted to dive down... Or, so, what, what I wanted to coil was coil the bird token. That's why I wanted to coil and make them dive down the bird token. Or not have that blocker. If they don't cast it. So, I should have... I needed to cast the Lava Coil main. Like, the first... First main phase, like I wanted to... Like, I was thinking about. So, I should should have coiled the bird... Token. That was certainly what I was considering doing. Then they have to... And then... They kind of have to dive down the, the bird token. I guess... Maybe they don't. They could still dive down the Niv and get another blocker. But if they don't cast dive down... I guess I just dive down the Crackling Drake. Because then if they, if they do cast it, I don't attack. If they don't cast it... I do attack kind of thing. No, we, we can't win this anymore, Worst. You're saying you don't think our opponent's going to win with three? No, we're, we're dead. We can't, we can't win anymore. Because I let that combo go away. Yeah. So I need to just cast Lava Coral main phase or just activate Shalai, honestly. Just one of those. Attacking first. Wasn't sure exactly what to say and... You know, a couple of y'all were like, we should just attack first, and thought, yeah, that sounds good, and now that was... I mean, you know, this is just a lesson learned, that now that was just not something we could possibly do. That was our worst play. Well, that's alright. That, that was a tough spot. Alright, get Dovin out of here. I'm tired of seeing you, Dovin. All of Ravnica must learn to live together. We can't change our sleeves. Yeah, that's what we said after game two also. Niv Mizzet was like the only card that the only card in their whole deck that I was scared of. Honestly. And Niv's just really good. Just really good. That's unfortunate that had that game. I threw I threw away that game. Of course, it was just getting tougher for us, though. You know, if we're not attacking, because they're going to be able to start making just a ton of one-one tokens. But I could just sit back and activate Shalai forever. This looks like the Jeskai control deck that we played last night. So I'd rather Shalai get countered than uh, Karn. Wow. Alright, so we can just... We're just able to slam Karn now. And of course we just get Squee back in our hand. The There's no way our opponent gives us anything other than Squee there.
So we'll see if they have Niv Mizzet plus protection for Niv. Nope. I know my responsibility. Reverse. I've lost. Sometimes restoration means retribution. All right, they did not, did not flip the treasure map, so we'll kill that. Obviously, this, this is not a great play if our opponent plays Niv here, but kind of figured that they may have just been able to play Niv. Previously, if they had Niv, no time for a break. <laughs> I've seen things that would break someone like you. Um, I want to keep hitting land drops. Let's we'll play the Immortal. And double spell here. Hey, King Toll, good evening. It's an unfortunate time for us, for them to draw their Niv Mizzet. Okay, so you've got claws. That's how they get to ping the Vivian like that. You can't stop nature. Uh, looks like we're gonna lose to Niv again. It's just like the the one card that just always kills us. We had two loyalty on Vivian. Vivian has minus three to kill Niv Mizzet. Yes, me so I did. Hurry! Played real bad the game the game three. Made a bad mistake, unfortunately. Scars are lessons written in skin. Ooh. <laughs> you have to do better than that. Ha! I've seen worse. This is just us dying to Niv Mizzet each and every game. Oh yeah, you're right. At least we got our combo online again. Well, that didn't pan out. So that's good. We can add a Lyra to it next turn as well. Dang. Tajik down though. You know what? I'm not done yet. That was our one chance of hoping that combo stayed alive. Yeah, this looks this looks to be the exact 
This looks to be just the exact deck list that we played yesterday. So definitely want Carnage Tyrants. Definitely do not want Ruinous Blast. Cinder Vines are decent. Harpooner is good against Niv Mizzet. All right, Matthew, have, have fun selling ice cream. Yes, Nullhide is a mythic, yes. Our opponent will have three Teferis, but no, we, we don't have, like, we're just going to be attacking Teferi. That's our answer to Teferi is attacking. So we're gonna take out Shauna because they get uh, they're not so good against Clarion getting swept up with like everything else. Thanks, King Toll. Hey Jelly Tug. We'll see if we uh, get killed by Niv Mizzet again. Or if we can get this Carnage Tyrant out here fast enough. Alright, good sign. Got the Landry Storm to attack to get this treasure. So next turn we can play Karn, and then the following turn after that, Carnage Tyrant. If we are able to attack again with Landry Storm. Which it looks like our opponent's going to let us. We can just play Carnage Tyrant immediately. And that should be game. I don't think our opponent really has anything for Carnage Tyrant. Except for, I guess... Next turn, they could have Deafening Clarion plus Expansion. Yeah, they're, they're definitely just holding Absorb. They're not doing anything else. They're de definitely just wanting me to cast some spell into Absorb and let them gain three life. So we won't let that happen. Hey, James. So far, we've played five, or, yeah, five games today. Our opponent's played Niv-Mizzet on three of them, and so we've died. And our opponent has not played Niv-Mizzet the other two, and so we've won. That's how today's gone so far. If you're just just joining us. Heretic Man, or Heretic Man, one of those. Thanks for that sub. I really do appreciate you using the Twitch Prime sub here for three months in a row. You are awesome. All right, so our sub battle countdown is down to 20. We'll see if we get through that today. Hmm.
I like wanted to keep that hand, but just because I like keeping hands kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> we just couldn't. Just too many expensive cards. The Phillies have had a just a perfect start to the year. Harper has been amazing. Really couldn't ask for any more from the Phils. We'll pop this Cinder Vines to destroy the treasure map before they are able to flip the map. I think. Maybe we don't even. Only one blue source right now for the opponent. Hmm. Maybe we don't. Maybe we just keep this pressure going. Like, they're at 13. They can only cast 13 more spells. Grand Warlord Rada is pretty nice here. Puts good pressure on the opponent. So I could slam Carnage Tyrant. Playing Carnage Tyrant does let them flip map. Or I could just play Vivian and destroy map. So they flip map. The best thing they're doing, like they're playing Niv Mizzet next turn with map flipped. Yeah, they cannot counter Niv now, but like, so like, let's say, let's say I, I play Vivian and destroy the treasure map, and let's say they still have Blue Source plus Niv Mizzet next turn. Then what does my turn look like? It looks kind of bad. At least if they have Niv Mizzet next turn while I have Carnage Tyrant, we still attack them with Carnage Tyrant, right? So, it still looks pretty good. We could have just played Domri and then Domri plus destroy treasure map with Cinder Vines to deal them to, and then have Domri be able to give Carnage Tyrant haste next turn. Was an option as well. Are we finally able to, to deal with Niv Mizzet Perun? Nope. Never. Just can never kill this Niv Mizzet. At least I'm gonna hit that Niv Mizzet. Deal seven damage to it. 
Oh, so it's going to be like that, huh? So let's see if Cindervines, this this combo of Cindervines and Carnage Tyrant can bring this home. Not bad for a mouse. So at least they didn't do both modes. So we know that they're not going to have like another Clarion to kill my Carnage Tyrant. They are doing the lifelink. Lifelink's going to be killer. I guess Domri was like my play the previous turn. Yeah, I mean, we'll kind of see how many more Deafening Clarions they have. You call it anarchy. All right, see if we get to Zeke. It's just business as usual, like Uganda. Any geese here? No to Zeke, but Amara will do. I'm not going to pop the Cinder Vines to destroy their treasure map quite yet. Because, you know, that only deals two to them. No, it doesn't deal four damage. It deals two damage. Playing the Amara may not have made a whole lot of sense because they kind of have to have Deafening Clarion anyway to just to be able to survive. But we'll see. Yeah, it kind of depends on what our opponents play. Like, we'll have the Cinder Vines be able to destroy this treasure map at any time. If they play two, two spells, they go down to two, then we'll be able to use it. <laughs> the the draft shuffler is so predictable. Game one all lands, game two no lands. Don't you hate those matches? I mean, even if our opponent has settle, they die. Because settle still would deal one damage to them because of cinder vines. Like, cinder vines would kill them with settle. Alright, we finally won a game where our opponent played niv -Mizzet. It's only because we had Carnage Siren out first. Alright, one and one. Hey, what's up, 1960 pal? We got 1960 pal in the chat. We're listening to the 1975. Alright, come on, lands. We are currently one and one. There we go, that's a land. Let's get another one. More lands. Last is in.
incredible against Mono White. Love it. Um... So basically we just need to survive till Urza's Ruinous Blast. That's just kind of the game. We can use Karn to help us hit more land drops. Or Grand Warlord Rada can like add mana for us as well. We're going to play Karn next turn and tick up. Looking for a land. Hmm. We just go Lannery Storm attack. I don't have to shock. The pro the problem with going Karn tick up is they can just kill Tajik. And then I'm taking lethal. So now we have five mana. We have Lannery Storm alive. I can block with Tajik if need be. Love it. Love it. Play more things. Go ahead. Go down to five. I think five's a healthy life total. Yeah, I was hoping they had Luxodon. Even a Tribunal would have been fine at this point. And exile all of the stuff. They could have sacked bo Bodyguard. Not sure if that really matters. Man, Urza's Ruinous Blast. What a sweet card. Alright, I do not have lethal. I'm gonna go with Tristani to get the life linkers on the battlefield. To be able to attack with next turn. If it really matters. I guess I should mentor a life linker. They did the good game settle. That's what I thought. Certainly considering them doing that. But we got lots of cards, so we're good.
more settles. We just get to play these sweet. We just get to play more of these cool legendary cards. But yeah, main deck, they want to be super aggressive yet still have all these settles. All right, Vivian, come on back. How this thing goes is up to you. That can't help you now. <laughs> Our opponent definitely hates the mirror. <laughs> Do they have more settles? We'll see. The wilds are my shield. Oh. Didn't find Shalai. Yeah, didn't find Shalai. Yeah, Vivian just kind of does everything. Destroying enchantments, artifacts, flyers, just kind of does everything. Extra Blast, Extra Dawnbringer, all these Clarions and a Knight, and the Coils. We are taking out... I mean, Huali's not really the worst either. I mean, we have to trim some of these fives, but all of our fives are kind of good. I mean, I guess we just take out Vivian, I guess. Domri certainly out. Squee is out. This gives us 64. I guess it's also kind of Druidic Vow. Hey, what's up, Jason? Happy Wednesday. Do I really want this Knight of Autumn? Hmm. No, we need no keeping Amara uh, to help enable. Yeah, we need to we need to keep it in a decent amount of legendaries to help enable our Urza's Ruinous Blast. And so, like how you know, like if if it's a little bit later, if we have seven mana, we can drop Amara and um, blast in the same kind of turn. Any previews that I'm certainly that I'm currently really excited about? Not quite. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, and I haven't, I haven't really gone through all the cards too much or anything. I haven't really been paying attention to them too much. Uh, you know, it's still three weeks away, and just been kind of busy this week, and haven't. I just haven't been going through and reading them. Why is this a super greedy keep, King Toll? We have like we have our best card, the only one that matters. We have it here. We have two of them. It's definitely possible that we play Aurelia and they, you know, they keep exiling my stuff with, um, with like enchantments, and that's then we'll lose. 
I don't consider this a greedy keep whatsoever. I, I can't believe you'd mulligan a hand where you'd have turn five Ruinous Blast online. Not just in this matchup where Ruinous Blast is our best card. It makes no sense to mulligan the hand. See if they have another tribunal. The Legion's Landing is legendary. It's it would not get exiled for Ruinous Blast. They flip over Legion's Landing. It's it's okay. Deafening Clarion, of course, would keep them from flipping over Legion's Landing, but we may be able to get more value out of Deafening Clarion. Kill them. Stuff like Benelish Marshals there. All right, and it looks pretty good for Tristani surviving. Which, of course, that's what we really wanted was Tristani to survive. All right, let's get this Aurelia back. I like my Aurelia. And Blast was another, I guess this time it was really a five for one. They had the token from this Hunted Witness also. Let's go Druidic Vow for five. Let's see if we find Shalai. Hmm, no Shalai. Our last blast. And now our opponent has the Do I have Settle or am I activating a Danto? party trick. Not a very good Druidic Vow for us. They didn't even activate the first fort. While you may get somebody one time with Settle, you don't really get people more than that. Yeah, Field of Ruin definitely comes in pretty handy with all the transform lands for sure. I think you need to have like a mana base that can support it. Like this one, this one we need a lot of different colors in early. Like this one we can't. I don't have any colorless lands in this mana base here. Um, but 
in other mana bases, like two color mana bases and stuff, as long as like the mana is pretty good. Yeah, definitely like Field of Ruin. <laughs> yeah, the, the set looks pretty pushed. War of the Spark certainly looks pretty pushed. Uh, they've, like, they're making standard better, it looks like. You kind of go through ebbs and flows of, like, powerful sets to um, sets that are not very powerful kind of thing, and... I thought Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance were pretty high on the power level scale for standard, just kind of in general. And, you know, as compared to previous sets. So Amara's tough. Like, Amara's actually, like, a, a good card to be playing early. But it's going to be harder to get to Aurelia and Lyra with the Amara, you know, hitting land drops. So... Ideally, I would like to have that Amara, but I also want to get to Aurelia and Lyra. And I'm glad that we're facing Mono Red because these cards, in particular this one right here, very good against Mono Red. So I'm definitely glad I got rid of Amara now because that gives, you know, ups our percentage of hitting Lyra. The other thing is we only have one white mana right now also. So drawing Rootbound Craig. Or Craig. Not ideal draw because we need we need another white mana source. So Firebrand does, cannot kill Shauna with its ability, but I'm still blocking here because I don't want their uh, cards like Light Up the Stage and Skewer the Critics turned on. Ooh. And that's what it looks like. It looks like our opponent was trying to turn on Light Up the Stage. I am going to... Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and attack here. I just want to make sure we get the treasure so that we can play Lyra next turn. Even though this allows them to play light up the stage, I think it's worth it with us being able to play Lyra. Or Lyra. I don't know. Either one. Whatever. Nice, Boot. Got Night Shift all week? Cool. And there's the light up. So they did find a land. But I'm glad the other one's a risk factor. That's just going to get exiled. Do I want to lead with Aurelia? Oh, Aurelia. I kind of do. We can attack for five lifelink either way. Next turn. But if they decide to, like, use Firebrand plus, like, Burn Spell, Burn Spell or something. Oh, right. Risk, they're just going to be risk factoring. <laughs> Definitely love how there's two Atticuses in the in the chat today. So this turn went incredibly good for me. It's like this game's been going. They just played Legion War Boss. Legion War Boss is horrendous against Lyra. So they are forced to attack into Lyra.
this game's pretty over. So even if they even if they have multiple burn spells to kill Lyra, which is like what they need to survive, they are going to be left with very little resources after that. And we still have Aurelia that's beating them down. We're at a bunch of life. We'll play Tristani next turn too. This game's just over. It may take another minute, but <laughs> Lyra Scoop Bringer. Oh no. Oh, poor opponent. That's not good for you. I would not. They could attack with War Boss here. I would not block War Boss. I would let them. Let them have the war bosses. Still in test mode with Domri um, for this deck. Not sold on Domri, the Chaos Bringer. All right, Clarion's in. Extra Lyra in. Hmm. I guess I play Knight of Autumn. I don't like Blast as much against our opponent. As I do against like Mono White, for example. I don't like Domri against uh, the these mono red aggro decks though, like or just the aggro decks in general. I, no, I've never played Tashar in this deck. You had to build around Tashar to fully take advantage of that card. No white mana is a problem. Lannery Storm can get like one white source, maybe. If we just had white mana, I would be keeping this, but we don't. All right, definitely like this one better. And I'm not playing Lana Werewolf on turn one. That you know costs us two life to be able to play it on turn one. That you know just kind of leads us into playing the Clarion on turn two. I think we can probably wait till turn three to Clarion. That gives our opponent a chance to play their War Boss and everything on their turn three first. They have a Shock and a Viashina Pyromancer. So they'll, the next turn we'll be able to kill the Pyromancer and the Lava Runner. But we'll be down to 13. And we don't have any of our top end yet. To help us really stabilize. 
even though we're getting a two for one here with the Clarion, we're still only at 13 and don't really have a fast clock or anything like that. All right, check that at 10. is going to be a challenge. So we could have, of course, played Shauna plus Land War Elf this turn, and Shauna would be a lot bigger next turn after we play Tristani, and we could attack for a lot more the, the next turn. The problem with that, though, would be... Shana, well, with Shauna being a 2-2... If they did have a Chain Whirler, Chain Whirler would kill Land Warolf and Shauna. And that would be kind of a bummer. And yep, we're giving the, our opponents cards because they have Frenzy in play. So we'll just give them the cards in hand. Pop in the treasure to make the Captain Lannery Storm bigger. Not you. All right, now Shauna is huge. Eight eight. Yeah, it's it's just safer this way than than that Shauna uh, playing that before, and it's it's unclear whether we really even dealt less damage going this way anyway from attacking. I guess we did six total damage with the two attacks. If I would have played Shauna last turn, we could have maybe been doing like six also, but we would not have been able to play all of this stuff. Landry Storm helped us unload our hands, so I think we're actually in a better spot. Remember, these are legendary. While it would have been nice to play another one, they are legendary. And we are one point away. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Basically, where we're at, I think we can afford to play a Lanner that Lannery Storm on defense here, just in case. You know, our opponent has six lava runners that are like attacking us or whatever, or like lava runners plus like a you know a bunch of skewer the critics or something. You know, who knows what? All right. Double cast. What you double casting? Grout. Wizard's Lightning. Okay. 
Light up the stage. Have they played a land yet? I don't know if they have or not. If they have not played land yet, they could go l land, lightning strike. Can they play the land and have another wizard's lightning? Woo! Not quite enough. So close. So close. And good thing we gained that four life of those life linkers. We needed all of those four life. All right, three and one. So to kind of rem reminder, tomorrow we're doing the twelve hour stream for hitting our me undies goal. Oh, and overnight, actually, we've actually gotten three more quip signups. So we're at twenty seven out of thirty for the quip purchases. There, I only have. Oh wait, Bamp Link is for tomorrow, actually. Ooh, so we're gonna have an open slot here later on tonight. I forgot Bamp Link is for tomorrow night. So yeah, we just have the Bamp Link for tomorrow night. It's the only deck right now for a donation deck that I have in the queue. And so donation decks are usually twenty dollars. We're looking, so we're close to getting another gem pack. So if you have a donation deck you want to play tomorrow or f fourth tonight or second tonight, I can move zombies to fourth. So either second or fourth tonight, I can fit you in as well. Because, yeah, I forgot Bamp Link is for tomorrow night, not tonight. Hmm. So don't get to play Shauna here. I went with the red source go towards Squee. Shauna isn't really the best turn two play anyway. You know, it's just a, like a one one on turn two. But if I would have gone Sun Petal Grove, we could have played Shauna, but then we would not have been able to. Yeah, you know, we weren't going to be able to play Squee either way because Sun Petal plus Forest it doesn't let us cast Squee. Do I need to worry about my Karn getting countered? Like, what is, what is our opponent doing over here? I don't know. This could certainly be a, a deck with counter magic. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it could be Ionize. Stuff like that. Aw, Boot, you're so nice. Boot says, does anybody have a donation deck they want to submit? Boot will pay for it. Just the most interesting one gets it. Ah, so it's Jeskai. Played against Jeskai a little bit ago. Well chosen. Well chosen. Alright, so Whisper Boot a deck list. He's gonna give give you ten minutes. If you want whatever deck you want to see played, find your deck list, send a whisper to Boot there in chat. You may regret that choice. Hmm. They're giving me a bunch of Tristanis. <clears throat> so 
certainly looking for Vivian with continually ticking up Karn. May make sense to start minusing and just grabbing like the Tajik. Okay, well there's the Vivian. Hmm. Nah, let's stick up again. The choices we make reveal who we are. Yeah, I like hitting a land. Yeah, I'm not playing Vivian here into this counter magic. I'm going to go with the Grand Warlord Rada. Get to attack. Let me attack. Yay, we get to attack. That was the plan. We get to add another mana. Be able to play this Squee now as well. Bonus Squee. <laughs> Squee, the wind con. Squee, the immortal pain in our opponent's rear end. So I cannot play Dragon's Fall. Welcome to the channel, Dragon's Fall. Thank you so much for that subscription. Decisive action is needed. It's down to 19. Dragon's Fall. Wow, also gifting out five subs as well. So, Lords of Hugo, Pick Knight, My Own Leather Club, Stillburn, Hunt the Wind. Get those hype boats in the channel. Enjoy your brand new emotes. Thank you, Santa Dragon's Fall. Thank you very much. All right, so our sub battle countdown is now down to 14. We're going to be having that stream here real soon. Hmm. What sh should I play anything here? I don't want to play Tristani. Force my opponent to have the like a sweeper. Dragon Souls has been watching you for a while. Been fun watching all the random decks being played. Figured I would share the love. Aw, thanks, Dragon's Fall. Thank you. Guess we'll just pass the turn. After playing this land world. Guess we already have a, a lot of pressure out there. The good part about like playing Tristani would mean like they would have to have like cleansing Nova, and then they have once they cleansing Nova, then we get to resolve Vivian, kind of thing. Whisper boot to the head.
But yeah, if you have a, a donation deck, Whisper Boot, if you have a deck that you'd like to see played. See what we get here. Choice. So certainly playing Vivian this turn. Wild animals I like. People, not so much. And let's get the squee that never dies. Let's get this back. I like our chances here. Having the two planeswalkers in play. Ixalan's binding. Every defeat is a new beginning. Now that's just plain rude. Nothing really to minus and go get. Are you certain of your decision? We're gonna, we'll see if Tristani. Wins the game for us here. Do they have like a seal away? They could have revitalize that we saw earlier. I have a blink of an eye. Well, that's good. Now we... Now we can have the Grand Warlord Rada on backup, even if our opponent has a sweeper here. How many of these Clarions our opponent have? Seems like a lot. They've played four of them, though. Don't think they have any more after already having four. <laughs> That's all five. <laughs> Alright, Blast is out. Tyrant in. Um, it's kind of about it. Knight of Autumn in, Coil out. And I think that's it. Ooh, Cinder Vines. So Cinder Vines in, Lyra. One Lyra out, one Shauna out. And then, do I take out another Shauna or another Lyra? I'll just take out the other Shauna. Drakes could be a problem. We have, like, the Vivians basically is, like, our only thing for Drakes. But we'll see if they actually do have Drakes or not. Definitely like this hand a whole lot. We have turn two Lannery Storm. This is what Lana War Elves helps us do, is have these uh, Tajik and Lannery Storm. Playing these things on like turn two and attacking with them is really nice. Don't counter it. No. I really wanted that treasure, so I could go like Cinder Vines, Anamara, or Domri the following turn. Cinder Vines has been okay. We it was a big part of why we defeated a a different uh, Jeskai deck previously. If you think I'm a crazy beast, 
Where do you see my mates? Have ourselves a peek, you know, like you do. Not ideal there. If we draw land, we can uh, have Hasty Carnage Tyrant next turn. But I figure we're going to be plussing Domri for like a while now. One to minus at the one time. Before you get your teeth kicked in. So I'm not playing any of these any more land war elves because I think my opponent's gonna have Deafening Clarion here anyway. But I wanted to get the Cinder Vines in play. Um, over just you know, I could have played Aurelia instead, but I think just you know, getting this out where they were to like make them Clarion and Getting the Cinder Vines out there just to start doing its chip damage over time. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. Oh, I should. I should play the Lanor Elf and give Lanor Elf haste. And then just cast the Shalai. I don't get to attack with Shalai. I think that's what I should do there. Just to have the land war off in play also. I am not. We need to move quickly. But now that they have a Teferi, I'm going to want to attack with the Aurelia. Things are about to get real rowdy. Yeah, get to ferry out of here. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. No, this is this is the first planeswalker set. This is the first set that's built around Planeswalkers like this. War of the Spark, that is, coming up. Oh yeah, Carney Boy with haste incoming. I'm probably going to wait for my opponent to deal with these Angels first before going with Carnage Tyrant. I guess it doesn't really make a lot of sense to... Yeah, like I'll probably wait, yeah, basically see if they have stuff like this, like Clarion... Okay, yeah, so now that they're dealing with the angels, now we can play Carnage Tyrant. Of course, we would have needed a land. You should really quit before you get your teeth kicked in. A 1 4 haste isn't real special. We'll just make Tristani a 2 5 in case our opponent has Lava Coil. They've cost. They've cast eight deafening clarions in the two games so far. They cast four last game, four this game. Last time they had four. This time they've had three plus an expansion. You're gonna hurt when this is through. All right, Carnage Tyrant, get it done. No, that time I honestly didn't really mind not... I didn't want... So, no, I don't think... So, basically, did I make the same mistake before of not playing Hasty Elf and then Tristani? That time I really wanted Tristani to have five toughness, so Lava Coil did not kill Tristani. Uh, I really wanted that. All right, final boss time. Four and one. After starting off with the loss, where didn't really play the best, we we're just kind of waking up for the day. 
and now we're playing a little better. Deck's doing good. Um, question is thoughts on the new bolus. I don't honestly don't know exactly what the new bolus is. Okay, you you picked two boot. Okay. You can just put the links here in chat if you want. Boot, it's, it's okay. You just put it right here. I'll open it up. I'll have it. All right, we got Esper Control. We've played Jeskai Control twice. Now we got Esper. And then boot, does it work better? Should I play it second or fourth? The ban blink is for tomorrow, so we have we have an open slot. We can either move zombies to fourth and play the donation deck next. Or we can go the other way. We'll play it Thousand Year Storm. Okay, we'll do that one next. End of the night, I'll be kind of tired. It'll be kind of hard. You know, it's, it's harder to think the end of the night. Thousand Year Storm. May not be as good uh, for me end of the night. So we'll do that one next. Perfect. Alright, hoping our opponent does not have another sweeper like that. Another cry of the Carnarium. Please don't. Tajik. Ooh, Aurelia. We could cer it's certainly possible we're going to need this treasure, so we're going to keep it around. Haha. -ha. Told you we we're going to need that treasure. Would you? No one knows the wilds like I do. But you should recognize you should recognize this song. <laughs> now this is from Super Mario Sunshine. This is Delfino Plaza. This was added to the, the final boss playlist yesterday. All right, so control. I mean, I guess we should be scared of Thief of Sanity, I suppose. But maybe not. I'm going to go... No, as in not being scared of Thief of Sanity. First. I 
Okay. Start with the Sacred Foundry. Got a good curve here with Amara into Captain Lannery Storm. But we'll see if our opponent has Cry the Carnarium like they had last time. Good news is, like, if we do get to attack with Lannery Storm, we can have five mana next turn for Huatli Warrior Poet. Aww. Boot, you're so nice. Hey, thank you so much. Boot says, thank you for all your... Your continued support. We literally couldn't do this without you. I'll keep your submissions and do my best to keep to get Todd to play them. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Ah, there is the thief. All right. So that means we are going to be getting a gem pack after this. We're going. We're going shopping, and we're going. We got twenty dollars towards the next gem pack as well. Perfect time for Huatli. You should surrender now. Huatli gets to kill the. You shall be erased from history. Gets to kill the uh, thief of sanity. And boom. There you go. Yep, this one's from Wind Waker. Well, not from Wind Waker. It's from Ocarina of Time. This looks like a good time for Tristani. Go and feast on their flesh. Pona wants to take all my stuff. So if I play a new Captain Lannery Storm, our opponent just gets to have their hostage taker block, bring back my Lannery Storm and kill, and then I have to sacrifice one. And then if they have like a sweeper, then I'm kind of in trouble. I don't know, I guess I'd have a backup Tristani still. I think we can kind of wait a little bit and just have this, just kind of attack for four here. Be patient. Now that's a huge problem. That's a very big problem. Hmm. Cinder vines, huh? Not looking like you're doing too much here, Cinder vines. have anything to do. Yeah, Vivian is the card that we need for sure. We need Vivian to kill this Lyra. Or I'll take a Kamal's Juridic Vow for a bunch that hits a Vivian and other things. That is not what we need to play against. Right on skip. Do not need this to ferry. Keep up the pace. This is 
um, the Metroid theme from Metroid Prime. Still looks real bad for us. Let's skip to the good part. So I could bring in Kral Harpooners. We're at the point where like Harpooner would not even kill the Dawnbringer. But like Harpooner also kills like Thief of Sanity, for example. I'm trying to think of all the ways that we're dead. Oh, what? They were attacking with Hostage Taker? I didn't even realize that. I guess I could have blocked that. But we get our Lannery Storm back. And we can kill Teferi if our opponent doesn't have any removal. I guess not kill Teferi. That was one one off. It was one short there. I won't let you win. Hurry! I'm not sure if our opponent is gonna play Thief of Sandy or Hostage Taker for game three with seeing like these seeing multiple Tristanis here. I kind of don't have time to attack more at this Teferi with this Lear Dawnbringer dealing so much damage to us. Time for plan B. As soon as I think of one. Ugh. Not good. Not good. Obviously, I could have attacked safer into Teferi, but I was risking it. We need to move quickly. You missed the Metroid. We had Metroid Prime a little bit ago. Let's 
Still looking to see if we can draw this Vivian to kill the Dawnbringer. That's pretty nice. Surveilling over the in insight to be able to cast that. All right, we got one last turn. See if we hit this Vivian here this next turn or not. I really should have seen that coming. We need them to not have a counter spell and us draw Vivian. Not the best of odds. This isn't a fight you can win. Let's skip to the good part. Alright. Vivian. Dang. Oh man, Druidic Vow. Could have been insane with how much mana we had. Rick Val could have been insane. Okay. That was one I thought we were doing pretty good. When we had when we played Huali to kill Thief of Sandy, I thought we were gonna win that, but let's get rid of Knight of Autumn. Get a couple harpooners in here. Get rid of Ascender Vines. And try this. I love Cinder Vines. I could see just playing two Lava Coils instead of Cinder Vines. I think we're going to do that. So, I mean, this is a keep, but unfortunately, we don't have a way to play Tajik or Squee on turn two. We have, to have, we have to have a shock land for that, and we don't have a shock land. Like, we have to have a, a stomping ground, or... Or, um, Temple Garden. Go, Tajiko. Our opponent really likes the minus two, minus two stuff with they have moment also to go with all these cry of the carnariums. That is pretty good against us. We have a lot of two power two toughness, sorry, uh, creatures. This is a deck I've put together, Odd Visions. Yeah, this is a deck that put together last format. We've been playing it a good amount. Just haven't haven't played it here in a, in like two weeks or so, but yeah, basically all the Legends decks are all decks that I've put together. Hmm. No lands. No lands for opponent either. Okay. Can we get some lands? We have 26 in our deck. Hooray, land. Uh, 
All right, one more. We can play Vivian next turn. And then one more, and we can play Carnage Siren. Land. Heck yeah. Go, Vivian, go. Let's see if you're worthy. <laughs> well, those are three good cards to put to the bottom. Druidic Vow, Karn, and Huatli. Those are like three of our best draws. Put those all on the bottom. Don't don't have another contempt. Please don't have another contempt. Yay. No more contempts. Meet my newest friend. These 3D cards are really cool. And I'm pretty excited that we're going to be getting another one after this. We're going to be getting, getting another $100 gem pack. We're going to be getting a bunch more 3D cards. So stick around after this match so you can vote on which cards you want to see us get. The wilds are my shield. Hmm. Let's go Tristani. Death Lizard deployed. Aw, uh, Death Lizard destroyed. So they did keep Thief of Sanity in. Against the Tristani deck. So we're going to have the Vivian Reed You're ultimate. Not walking out of here. And then we're going to fight with Harpooner. And even if the Harpooner would have died, it won't now. Even if it would have. So that's pretty cool. We also have this Captain Lannery Storm that attacks for lethal. That's also pretty cool. And there we go, final boss was defeated. 3-0 against control decks. Vivian Reed is awesome. Ooh, we got triple 20 gems. There we go. So yeah, Nia Legends, still strong. Uh, I liked, so this time, the new addition to this deck from the last time we played a while ago was just putting two Harpooners in the sideboard. And I certainly really liked those two Harpooners. Uh, they came up pretty clutch multiple times. The other card that we added in was the Knight of Autumn. And it was okay. Uh, I could see maybe having that being another Harpooner. But Knight of Autumn helps out in, in different matchups, and I, I like that extra disenchant effect. So, there we go, yeah. Nia Legends. What a fun deck. What are we missing from this deck? Anything as far as... No, I think... So, Sun Petal Grove and Rootbound Craig. We're definitely getting those two. But then it would just be Clarion and Knight of Autumn are the only other ones. Wow, Knight of Autumn looks nice. Okay. But there we go, N Nia Legends. All right, so if you are uh, watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.